Hi, I want to take two here. Um, Cause I don't know why my screen went black last time. But here we are, family read aloud time. We are reading Stella Diaz has something to say by Angela Dominguez. Um, when we left off yesterday, we Stella and her brother Nick and her mom were at the biblioteca. And Stella was very excited because there was an author read aloud. <clears throat> um, and she was excited it was a girl, and she was excited that that author was reading in English and Spanish. And so Stella thinks maybe she might be an author one day. Um, and she's also still getting ready for her presentation at school. Um, so we're going to pick up with Chapter 17. Here we go. I'm in the middle of reading about narwhals when Dad picks us up. The narwhal is a type of whale. People think it has a giant tusk, but it's actually a tooth. Narwhals are extra special because they are rarely seen. <clears throat> People tried to keep them in ca captivity in the 1960s and 1970s, but sadly they kept dying. I only see Dad once or twice a year, and this time it's right before spring break. He's in Chicago for a week with my tío Carlos. Apparently, they're going to some sort of convention for my tío's clothing store. When Dad arrives at our house, he is in a new car that I've never seen before. Dad always likes to drive instead of flying, so he must have gotten it back in Colorado. The new car is a sports car. You know, the ones that look like they go really fast. I'm used to this, though. Every time I see him, it's a new car. As we put on our seatbelts, he says that he's taking Nick and me bowling. Cool, says Nick. I don't say anything. I've never been bowling before. I'm excited, but I don't know what to expect. As soon as we get to the bowling alley, Dad says to us, you guys paying? He laughs. I look over to Nick. He's not laughing. I know why, too. Since Dad never sends us money, we never know when he will actually pay for things. Mom knows this, so she always gives us extra money when we see him, just in case he makes us pay. Nick, it's just a joke. Nick is still not laughing. Dad just shrugs. He goes over to the register. One adult and two kids. Dad opens up his wallet. I see a picture of Nick when he was little. Then I see a picture of a baby. Who's that, I ask, pointing to the picture. You, he says. I'm a little surprised. Really? See, si. it's you from your first passport picture before we moved to the United States. Vamos, let's get some zapatos on your feet. <clears throat> Apparently, you can't wear regular shoes on the bowling lanes. You have to borrow these really cool shoes that are colorful. I put them on. I think I might like bowling, I say to Nick. I kick my heels together like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Let's go, Twinkle Toes, Nick says. We walk over to the lanes and Dad enters our names into the computer. Then he hands me a few different balls to find one that I can bowl with. I find a bright orange one that I can actually carry. Senoritas primero, says Dad. I like it when Dad says girls go first. Nick blows a raspberry. I'm all smiles until I walk toward the lane. The floor is slippery and I get all nervous trying to lift the ball. It feels too heavy. What do I do, Dad, I ask. It's not rocket science, just roll the ball, says Nick. I turn to Roja this time because I'm angry. Just because I'm new to something doesn't mean I'm stupid. I wish that I were a narwhal right now so I could poke Nick with my giant tooth. Instead, I stick my tongue out at Nick. Then I roll the ball, it goes nowhere near the white pins. In fact, my first two balls go right into the gutter. Nick goes next. He is much better than me and knocks a few pins over. Dad is really good. He knocks over all the pins. I don't know much about bowling, but he kicks out his leg like the professionals. <clears throat> Dad, how come you are so good, I ask. Well, I used to go bowling a bunch when I was a teenager. He reties his shoes and looks at me. I wasn't very close to my parents. They were more concerned with their parties than with your tío or me. Once I lo no longer had a nana, a nanny, I spent all my time with my friends bowling or playing pool. I feel sad for a second. I never thought about dad as a kid. Sounds kind of lonely. I love spending time with mom and Nick. I look at him. I say in Spanish, dad, could you teach me how to bowl better? Claro que si, mi amor, Stella. Of course, my love, he says. He shows me how to line up my feet with these little arrows first. <clears throat> Next, he shows me how to swing my arm better and finally to let the ball roll. When I do it by myself, the ball goes slower than it did before, but it's going straight down the middle. 
I actually knocked over some pins, almost all of them. Way to go, Stella, says Nick. He gives me a high five. Dad kisses the top of my head. I smile. For a moment, I miss having him around. After we finish bowling, Dad drops us off at the house. Before you go, he says, grabbing a box from the back seat. Here are new coats for the two of you. I see the tags. They are from my T.O. store. Dad gives Nick and me each a coat. <coughs> I try mine on. It's too big. It's also pink with fur. I like pink, but a whole pink coat is too girly for me. Still, I say, gracias. I look over at Nick and I giggle. His coat is way too small. It's so tight around his shoulders, he can't even put down his arms. Oh, I guess you grew more than I realized. You're going to be as tall as your uncle. Nick just shrugs and hands him back the coat. I'll mail you a new one, Dad says. Nick looks at me. We both know that is never going to happen. I give Dad a hug goodbye. I feel a little sad again. My dad is not all terrible. He just doesn't know better. It's like the people who used to hunt narwhals. People used to think that narwhals were related to unicorns. They didn't know they were regular sea mammals and weren't magical. I think part of dad just doesn't realize he's not doing a good job of being a father. Then again, I don't think he knows how. It doesn't sound like he had really great parents. Nick and I are lucky because at least we have mom. Nick puts his arm around me as we go back inside our house. As we open the door, I smell something wonderful. Mom is in the kitchen making albondigas again. I run into the kitchen and hug her tightly around the waist. Whoa, Stella, you surprised me. I look up at her. I love you, Mommy. I love you more, she says as she hugs me back. Chapter 18. Today I turn nine years old, which means I'm big enough to take more care of myself. This year my birthday is on a Saturday, so I don't have to go to school. Good thing, too, because I couldn't sleep last night thinking about the day ahead. Mom pretended not to remember my birthday last night when we were playing games and eating Chinese food. Mom, are we doing anything special tomorrow, I asked. I'm not sure, should we? She said with a wink. Yeah, nothing special happens tomorrow. The most boring day ever, says Nick. I stuck my tongue out at him and opened my fortune cookie. I went to sleep a little worried, but I was pretty sure I could hear presents being wrapped and smell cake being baked in the kitchen in the middle of the night. So when I hear Mom tiptoeing into my room and I see lighted candles, I know she and Nick didn't forget. They sing happy birthday twice, the first time in English and the second time in Spanish. I blow all nine candles at the same time and feel extra lucky. On our birthdays, we always get to eat cake for breakfast. Mom made my favorite this year, coconut cake with a special type of caramel called cajeta. Then she put a bunch of sliced mangoes on top. I run to the kitchen to grab the plates while Mom and Nick chase after me. When I get to the kitchen, I see wrapped presents on the table. There's even one for Nick because Mom always says that we need to celebrate being hermano and hermana. Because I'm a really good hermana, I let him open his present first. But before that, I give him a card I made that has a drawing of a sea dragon on it. Sea dragons are like sea horses, but they look like leafy dragons. Inside it says, to the best big hermano, love Stella. I drew the sea dragon because if my brother were a fish, he'd be a sea dragon. He always takes care of me like the male sea dragons do. Sea dragons also carry the young on their tails. Nick still gives me piggyback rides sometimes. Plus, Nick really likes dragons in general. It's the only animal he draws. Thanks, sis. Mom says, ahora, ahora, it's Stella's turn. I squeal and open up my four presents on the table one at a time. The first is an envelope, and inside are tickets for the Shed Aquarium. This is going to help me finish my project, I say. Thanks, Mom. Way to go, Mom, Nick cheers. Then I open the second present. James and the Giant Peach. Now you don't have to check it out from the library anymore, Mom says. Gracias, I say. I jump up to hug her and she kisses my cheek. Mom is the best. She used to try to give me baby dolls, but then she realized that I like books and art supplies way more. The third present is a bigger box. It's 128 colored pencils, the fancy artist kind. Before, I only had 24. I also didn't have any of the metallic colors. Now, I'll be able to draw superheroes with metallic capes for my brother. I saw Stanley doing that at school the other day, and it looked really cool. You can use the metallic ones to draw details on your submarine, says Nick. We high five. He's so smart. The last present is really small, like the size of a note. I open it. <clears throat> it's a card. On the front, it says, to la mejor hija, or to the best daughter. 
I open the card. Written inside is go to the garage. It's a surprise, I yell as I run to the garage. I love surprises. There, in the middle of the garage is a red bicycle without training wheels. Mom and Nick like to go riding with each other around the neighborhood on the weekends. I was always a little jealous, but I didn't have a bike without training wheels, so I would play at Jenny's instead. Awesome, I say as I jump up and down. Can we ride now? No riding until you eat your cake for breakfast, Mom winks. Deal, we all shake hands on it. After two slices of cake, I put on my outdoor clothes and grab my helmet. I want to wear my pajamas, but Mom doesn't think that is a good idea. Stella, the road will get stuck in the wheels, she warns. The three of us walk our bikes to the park, across the street to practice. I put on my helmet. I'm ready. I put one fat foot on a pedal. The bike starts wobbling. I try to put my other foot on the other pedal. It wobbles even more. This is much harder than when I used to ride with training wheels. What if I fall? Then I look around. Worse, what if someone sees? I look at Nick and whisper, this is scary. Nick walks over and holds the bike. It's okay, kiddo, get both feet on the pedals. I do when he holds the bike. Okay, now just pedal. I try, but I stop and put my feet on the ground. Mom, what if I fall? My lip is starting to shake. Mom walks over and both of them look at me. Everyone falls at some point, Stella. Yeah, I'm pretty much the best at everything, but even I fell a little bit at the beginning, says Nick. Then he rubs my helmet. Really? But, Michikita, Stella, if you don't want to ride, you don't have to today, Mom says. It's your birthday and it's Stella's rules. Yeah, we can play video games and I'll let you beat me, Nick elbows me gently. I take a deep breath. It takes all of my courage, but I say, no, I'll try. I am stronger than I think. Right, Mom? Mom nods. It takes about 10 tries with Nick holding the bike while I get started. Like the sea dragon, he knows when to let go so I can swim away on my own. Finally, I ride the bike a few times without any help. Before I know it, I'm doing loops around the playground with Mom and Nick. Each loop feels more natural and my legs get less shaky. They start to feel strong. As I ride around, I can't help but imagine all the fun times I'll have riding my bike now with Nick and Jenny. I wonder if Anna knows how to ride a bike. Maybe all of us could ride together. That makes me feel excited and I begin to pedal faster. Then I wonder if Stanley knows how to ride a bike. I'm sure he'd be really good at it, but then again, I'm not sure anymore. Stanley's not always the best at everything, just the best at most things. For a brief second, I imagine Stanley riding bikes with us and I pedal faster and faster. Chapter 19. Wow, I say as we walk through the big doors of the shed aquarium. My mouth drops open. It's more beautiful than I imagined with giant columns and chandeliers hanging everywhere. I'm so happy to finally be visiting the aquarium. I know it will help me finish my project. I've nearly completed all the drawings and started the submarine, but I need a little extra inspiration to figure out what I'm going to say. I'm still pretty nervous about it, but Nick promises he'll help me practice. This is so exciting I could spell, I say. Then I spell E-X-C-I-T-I-N-G. Nick rolls his eyes. Come on, Bumblebee. I grab a map right away and start trying to figure out where everything is. I especially want to make sure to see the lionfish and the last fish in my animal project. Lionfish are originally from the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, but many aquariums have them on display, including the Shed Aquarium. As we wait in line to enter the exhibits, I look all around the signs hanging from the ceiling. The aquarium is so big and it's full of so many people. There's an area for people to check coats, an area with tour guides, and a really long line to get tickets. Luckily, Mom has the tickets already, so we can go right in to see the exhibits. Ready, asked Mom. I nod and I lead my family to the jellyfish room. When we enter the dark room, there's a soft glow, but as we walk toward the glass, it grows brighter. It's like magic. We spend a bunch of time looking at the different types of jellyfish and trying to decide which one is our favorite. Did you know they don't have brains, I say? That's cool, Nick replies. After the jellyfish, we walk to the Amazon rising section where it's humid and warm. That's because there are more than just fishes in this section. It's a mini jungle filled with plants and other Amazonian creatures such as tarantulas, monkeys, and even an anaconda. Out of the fishes in the Amazon, mom likes the leopard whipray and zebra striped stingrays best, while I like the fruit eating fish named the tambaqui. Nick makes a stop at his favorite, the piranha exhibit. Be careful, Stella. I hear they especially like to eat nine year old girls. I roll my eyes. Can we go see the sea dragons next? 
Mom and Nick agree with me. But just as we walk into the Sea Dragon area, I see a familiar boy with light brown hair holding a map in front of his face. As soon as he lowers it, I know who it is. Stanley. Stanley Mason. I whisper to myself, really? Why is he here? I grab my map and lift it in front of my face. Even though I feel a tiny bit less nervous around him now, I'm not ready to talk to him outside of school. Rapido, I think. Immediately, I plan my escape. Oh, I meant sea turtles. I start walking into another hallway. Mom and Nick look at each other. Whatever you want, Stella. When we get to the sea turtles, I don't see Stanley. I relax and watch the sea turtles gracefully swim. It's almost as if they are doing Tai Chi, except instead of doing it outside in the park like my neighbors do, the sea turtles are doing it in the water. Then I hear Stanley shout, awesome! I whisper to mom, there's too many people in here. Let's go see the sea otters now. I walk even faster this time. My roha quickly goes away when we enter the sea otter room. Straight away, I know this is my favorite room, and it's not just because it feels cooler. The sea otters might be the Olympic gymnasts of the sea. They spin, twirl, and flip through the water, all while looking adorable. I desperately want to get a better look at one, so I chase it around the curved tank. But as I go around the curve, I almost run right into Stanley. He's too busy looking at another sea otter with his dad to notice them. This time, I don't even wait to say anything to Mom or Nick. I just run into the next room. Wait, Nick and Mom both say as they chase after me. The rest of the day goes like that. Instead of seeing dolphins, sharks, and even penguins, I see Stanley, Stanley, and Stanley. Why don't we take a break, Mom says. I can tell she's a little tired and annoyed from running all around. We go to the cafeteria and I order two scoops of lime sherbet with nuts on top. It doesn't help. My perfect day at the aquarium is nothing like I had hoped it would be. Worst of all, I'm too embarrassed to tell Mom and Nick why I was running from room to room. Mom can tell something is bothering me. Stella, ¿todo está bien? She's asking me if everything is okay. She only speaks pure Spanish to me when it's something serious. See, si, the, the aquarium is very big. I'm just tired. I rest my face on the table. Stella, did I see that boy Stanley from your class? Mom asks. No. I keep my head on the table. If she could see my face, she'd know I was lying. I don't like lying to Mom, but I'm too embarrassed to tell her the truth. My mistake. I feel her hand on my head. She starts making a braid with my hair, and I feel a little better. Well, we can go then and come back another time, but why don't we get you a small birthday regalo? I lift my head. Another regalo? Another present? When we enter the museum store, I know what I want right away. Under the giant octopus in the middle of the store is a huge, beautiful book with the title, The Ultimate Guide to Sea Creatures in glittery letters. It's filled with so many pictures that I want to draw. I hug the book, close my eyes, and spell A-W-E-S-O-M-E. I open my eyes and I hear a voice that says, it is awesome. It's Stanley. I want to run, but I can't. Mom and Nick are a few feet away. If I sprint out of the store, they'll think something is very wrong instead of the truth, which is that I'm just too shy to talk to Stanley. Then I notice that Stanley is holding the same book. Suddenly, I remember what Jenny told me. Just ask questions. Be Sherlock Holmes. Using my own power of deduction, I realize I have something to say. The perfect question. I mean, he's at the aquarium. He said the book was awesome. So I take a deep breath. My throat is dry, but I manage to ask quietly. Do you like marine life, Stanley? Why you pee, Stanley spells. He opens the ultimate guide to sea creatures and points to the lionfish in the book. This one is my favorite. That's one of my favorites too, I say. It's actually the last fish in my animal project. Cool, says Stanley. You know, I was gonna do fishes too, but I saw your drawing drawings, and realized mine would never be as good. So I decided to do monkeys instead. I'm doing a monkey mobile. He grins. I'm surprised. He saw my project? I never thought he'd be interested in what I was doing. Stanley says, I've been wanting to talk to you about your drawings and how you got so good, but I thought you didn't like me. You always cover up your drawings and turn away before I can ask you. That's not true at all, I quickly reply. I also have some art books if you want to see them. I draw from them all the time. Yeah, he says, that'd be awesome. Stanley then opens his book and starts pointing out all his favorite fish. I start doing the same. Before I know it, I'm no longer Roja, and I don't have to think about what I'm going to say. Talking to Stanley feels normal, like talking to Nick or Jenny. I ask him, Stanley, do you know what you are doing for your presentation? 
I'm gonna wear an ape costume. What about you? Not sure yet. You should dress up like Jacques Cousteau. I gasp. That is the best idea. I really need to come up with something else to go with my ape costume now. It's not like I can bribe people with cookies again. What do you mean? I can feel my eyebrows pushing together. I give out cookies every time I'm new or trying to get people to like me. That's a trick my mom taught me. I giggle, remember Stan remembering Stanley's birthday cookies. I can't believe he was nervous then. He looked as cool as a cucumber. Mom's the best, I say. Then Stanley's dad walks over and says, who is this, buddy? He's grinning and has a Texas accent. Oh, this is Stella. Stella's in my class and she loves fishes too. She's an expert at math and spelling and is the class artist. I beam, fishes are simply A-M-A-Z-I-N-G. Stanley's dad says, well, she seems like a great friend. You guys should play together. You've been looking for a friend to ride bikes with since we moved here. You know how to ride a bike, Stella? Nick walks over. Stella is great at riding bikes. He squeezes my shoulder. Then he whispers into my ear, we'll practice more. Mom links arms with me. Hi, Stanley. I look up at her slowly. I'm a little nervous that she might be upset with me for lying, but instead of a frown, she has a giant smile. She winks at me. I don't know about you all, but I'm starving. Who wants pizza? Nick and I raise our hands. Stanley, would you and your father like to join us? Can we, Dad, exclaims Stanley. Sure, we've been meaning to try real Chicago deep dish pizza, he replies. Mom, do you mind if we see the lionfish before we go, I ask? It's the last fish in my project. I accidentally forgot to see it earlier. Mom nods, and the five of us walk to the lionfish. While they might be in one of the smaller tanks, the lionfish do not disappoint. They are more lovely in real life. Wow, they move so slowly, says Stanley, pointing at a white and black lionfish. I nod and say, I wonder if it's because of their shape. They almost look like peacocks. Stanley grins in agreement. The lionfish have large striped rays that spread out all around them. Well, they don't look too happy, replies Nick. I giggle. The lionfish do look like they're pouting. Maybe they're hungry. Did you know lionfish can go up to three months without eating, I say? Cool, says Stanley. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a lionfish, says Nick. Let's go get some pizza. Everyone laughs and we head to the pizzeria. Over a delicious, messy, deep dish, we talk and look at my new book at the table. I have to clean my hands and face constantly with my napkin, but I don't mind. I like being able to share my new present with everyone. As I wipe tomato sauce off my face for the millionth time, I smile. My new book is a top-notch present, but how the day ended is probably the best present of all. Okay. We, um, no, we're going to finish this up tonight. There's not that much left. We're going to finish it up. It's Friday. It's the end of the week. <clears throat> Chapter 20. When I wake up on the day of the presentation, I feel mostly happy about going to school. It might be the fact that I'm nine now or that the school year is almost over, but lately things have been good. I did well in the spelling bee. I can ride a bike and Jessica isn't really bothering me anymore. It's not like Jessica hasn't tried. I've just become a professional at ignoring her. Having more friends helps too. It means I'm not alone in dealing with Jessica and she's less likely to say something. Lunch is also more fun because Lauren, Isabel, and Anna eat with Jenny and me more regularly. I even sometimes talk to Lauren in class now, though I both still like being quiet. I don't run away from Stanley anymore and I'm not afraid he thinks I'm weird because we're friends now. Best of all, I'm ready for my presentation. I am gonna dress up like Jacques Cousteau like Stanley suggested, which goes perfectly with my submarine. I made it out of styrofoam poster board and glued my fish drawings on the outside. Both Jenny and Stanley helped. Jenny cut out all the fishes perfectly while Stanley helped with making sure the submarine was realistic looking. Real submarines have portholes, said Stanley, and nuclear reactors. I think I'll skip the nuclear reactor, I replied. As promised, Nick helped me practice the presentation the night before. You don't want to memorize the whole presentation. It sounds lame. Also, you don't want to read from a handout. That makes it so boring. So we practiced the first minute when I introduced myself as Jacques Cousteau. With Nick's help, I came up with the best introduction. It was so good I presented it to mom. <clears throat> my name is Jacques Cousteau. Welcome to the wonderful world of fishes. Have you ever wondered what lives in the sea? Well, today I'm going to tell you. Mom applauded. Over our morning cereal, Nick gives me a little pep talk. Remember, the first minute is the hardest, then it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy, I reply. That's right, Mr. Cousteau. He shakes my hand. I wish Nick could go with me to school. 
Luckily, Mom is able to come for the presentation. She wanted to help me set up the submarine, and we also have an appointment before class with Ms. Thompson about my speech progress. As we walk up to the building, I see a boy in an ape costume. I wave. H-E-L-L-O, -L -L Stanley. Hi, S-T-E-L-L-A. I'm a little nervous when Mom meets with Ms. Thompson. I think I'm doing better in speech, but I can never tell. I sit outside her office while they talk before class. After a few minutes, both Mom and Ms. Thompson come back outside. Mom is smiling. Ms. Thompson says, that's an interesting outfit, Stella. She seems a little confused as she looks at my blue turtleneck, blue pants, and red beanie. I'm Jacques Cousteau. She laughs. Oh, of course. Then she continues, Stella, I'm sad to say that I think this is goodbye for us. I, re I recommended to your mom that you stop taking speech class. I squeal. I'm so happy. But I want you to read out loud at night for practice. I promise. Take care, Stella, she says. I wave goodbye. As we walk to class, Mom whispers, can you believe she still asked me if your father is moving back? I am definitely glad not to be answering that question anymore. When we get to the classroom, we set up my submarine. Mom can't stay the whole day because she has to work, which means I have to go first with my presentation. You'll feel better getting it done sooner, too, Mom whispers. To shake off the nerves, we do some jumping jacks. I notice Jessica staring at us. She's wearing an equestrian outfit for her presentation. Good luck with your presentation, Jessica, says Mom. Jessica crosses her arms and turns around. I look up at Mom, who pats my head. She's the best. I walk to the front of the class. I feel myself turning roja when I first open my mouth. My turtleneck feels apretado around my neck like a boa constrictor. Hello. My voice is shaky. My name is... Louder, someone says. I catch eyes with Jessica, who looks very smug. I can only imagine what she's thinking. I start doubting myself, but then I look out to the crowd. On my left, I see Stanley in his ape costume. He gives me a thumbs up. My name is Jacques Cousteau, I say without my voice shaking. I look out to the crowd again. This time I notice Miss Bell, who's in the middle and smiling. I take a deep breath, I stick out my chest. Welcome to the wonderful world of fishes. When I look out to my right, I see that mom's taking pictures. Surrounded by my support system, my inner starfish starts taking over. You ever want to know what lives in the sea? I see Ben, Lauren, and a bunch of kids nod their heads. Well, today I'm going to tell you. As usual, Nick was right about the first minute. It does get much easier. I point out all 19 fishes on my submarine. I made more fishes than I had to for the project. With fishes with names like Blobfish and Wahoo, I just couldn't help it. I get excited the more and more I talk, and when I'm done, people actually applaud. I immediately run to the back to hug Mama. Fantastico, Stella, she whispers. She stays to watch Stanley's presentation, which is pretty great, too. Stanley uses monkeys from the Barrel of Monkeys game to make a mobile and printed out facts about monkeys on banana shapes. Plus, he is really funny in a safe costume. He even makes monkey noises. I clap loudly for him when he, fishes, when he finishes. He certainly didn't need the cookies. Lauren's presentation is also good. She brought in her uncle's parrot like she said she would. But it turns out the parrot doesn't talk. He just whistles. She still has to talk the whole time, so I make sure to smile and give her the thumbs up while she presents. Jessica's presentation is the most boring. She reads her presentation from her notebook and just flips through a slideshow of different horses. Like usual, Jessica doesn't seem nervous at all, but I realize maybe that's not always good. Maybe it's good sometimes to be nervous about things because you'll work harder at them. At the end of the school day, Miss Bell hands us our grades on our projects. She gives me three gold stars and an A plus plus plus. <coughs> Excuse me. She also wrote wahoo like the fish I mentioned during my presentation on top next to a smiley face. I grab my cheeks because my face hurts from smiling so much. I just can't stop. Not only did I speak out loud in front of the whole class, I did it well. Today, I really lived up to my name. I really was an Estrella. Chapter 21. Even though it's summer and we've finished our animal projects, I still like reading about marine life. My new favorite is the sea otter, mostly because I loved seeing several of them at the shed. It also doesn't hurt they look like teddy bears with thick, soft fur. While researching them, I found out that when they sleep, they hold on to each other's paws so they have someone to protect them. I'm too old to hold hands, but if I were a sea otter, I would have many people to hold paws with. I'd hold paws with Nick, Mom, Jenny, and my family in Mexico. I even think Stanley and I would be sea otter amigos. 
Jenny and I are also talking about doing a sleepover with Anna and Isabel. I've never done a sleepover that big before. For me, summer doesn't officially start until my family walks to Oberweiss to get ice cream. Of course, we could drive there, but walking is more of an adventure. We pass through different neighborhoods where there are all types of houses. There are gingerbread looking houses, big houses, and houses with pools. I like to imagine how different my life would be if we lived in one of those big houses. Then I look at mom and Nick and I don't want anything else. Our favorite game to play as we walk is spies. Mom always starts us off. Okay, niños, where is our big mission? Russia, I say. In all the spy movies, they are in Russia. Oh, good one, says Nick. I'll be Boris. Call me Natasha, I say. Mom laughs. Then we pretend we're being chased. We run in between houses and Nick tells the dogs to be quiet while we tiptoe. By the time we get to Oberweiss, we're dying for ice cream. I usually order lime sherbet with nuts, but today I want to try something different. I go with strawberry frozen yogurt with gummy bears. Nick always gets cookies and cream. Mom is crazy though. She likes to switch around. Sometimes it's coffee, butter pecan, or chocolate. She puts her hand to her chin, pauses, looks at me and says, what do I look like? Without a doubt, butter pecan, I answer. Nick rolls his eyes. Why do I have to live with two loca ladies? We're not crazy, we're just creative, I reply while crossing my arms. Then I put two little fingers above my head like an alien. Nick ruffles my hair. After our ice cream adventure, I meet up with Stanley and Jenny to ride bikes around the parking lot at the school. Stella, can you ride your bike without holding the handlebars, asked Stanley. That's scary, I exclaim. Stanley and Jenny raise their arms for a second and howl. It's, Stanley says, F-U-N. Jenny agrees. Try it, Stella. I feel sweat as I lift up one arm and then the other. My arms are shaking, but it feels a little less scary than I thought. I let out a small howl. It feels great. I raise my arms higher above my head. Then Stanley and Jenny join me, and the three of us howl together. That is the end of our book. That is the end of Stella Diaz Has Something to Say by Angela Dominguez. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I went a little longer today, but I didn't want to leave you with only a few pages left. So I'll be back on Monday with a new story, and I have a few choices, um, but I haven't decided which one yet. But I will let you know. I'll be back Monday at 6. Okay. Have a great weekend.